In my F4S guide, I suggested turning on the cyclic switching and constant elevation radar options in the settings to make using the radar simpler and easier. And I stand by that. I think that for most players in most situations, the simplified controls are not only easier to use, they're frankly better. But they do have limitations. So I wanted to talk about what turning those options off does, how to set up the controls for them, how to use them, and the situations where I think the more advanced radar controls are worth using. At the end of the day, as with everything related to controls, it is subjective and up to you what you want to use. I'll do my best to explain the pros and cons of each, but I don't think there's a right or wrong answer when you're deciding whether or not to use one or both of these. Let's start with the cyclic switching option. As a refresher, when the game refers to BVR mode, it's talking about the ability to select and lock targets from search mode. You can only do this if the radar supports BVR mode, and some radars have range or azimuth limits for the areas where they can select and lock targets this way. The default behavior is with the cyclic switching option turned on. To change what target you want to lock, you use the select radar target to lock keybind and it will cycle through the available targets, hence the name cyclic switching. If you've got IFF, cyclic switching will not select friendly targets. With only one target on your screen, cyclic switching will keep that target selected. So if your radar has a bad ACM mode or no ACM mode at all, you can throw your radar into narrow scan and very easily get a lock by just pointing your nose at the target so he's the only one in your scan area and then hitting the lock key. This works great for stuff like the J8B. Cyclic switching works well when there's only a couple targets on your screen, but when you've got a cluttered display, it becomes a mess. There's a lot of targets to cycle through, the cursor doesn't follow a predictable pattern and jumps around randomly, sometimes contacts are showing up and disappearing, and if you cycle past your target, you have to mash the button to get back to where you were since you can't go backwards. And that's not to mention TWS, which is an absolute mess with cyclic switching, and it's nearly impossible to select the target you want when there's a bunch of contacts on your screen. So that's where manual cursor control comes in to address the limitations of cyclic switching. If you play DCS, you're probably already familiar with how this works. You have a cursor which you control manually and move over whatever target you want to interact with. We have the same functionality in War Thunder. To enable manual cursor control, disable the cyclic switching option. Note that this disables the select target to lock keybind and we can no longer select targets that way, so we need to set up cursor control keybinds. These are called horizontal and vertical radar IRST target Q control axis. It's super important to make sure that you have relative control turned off. Make sure you see minimum and maximum value, not increase and decrease value. Assign these wherever you want, I have mine on my arrow keys. Now when you're in search mode, you'll see two vertical lines in the middle of your display. This is your cursor, which you can move around with the keybinds you just set up. The concept is the same as before, except now you have to manually put the cursor over any target you want to lock. When you press the lock button, it will attempt to lock at the current cursor position, regardless of whether or not there's actually a target there. It will also allow you to lock friendlies, which is something to keep in mind. Cursor control really shines in TWS. When you move the cursor onto a TWS contact, the cursor snaps on and follows that contact, and that contact becomes your primary selected target. Since you have control over where the cursor goes, you can quickly and easily pick exactly what target you want. To stop following a target, just move your cursor off. This is one of the biggest advantages of manual cursor control. It's so much nicer to use for TWS than cyclic switching, and for using on cluttered screens in general. In my opinion, cursor control also really shines if you're playing sim on a HOTAS. Most modern HOTAS systems have slew sensors, basically little analog mini sticks for the purpose of controlling stuff like this. To set up cursor control on one of these, flip the detect axis switch and then move the mini stick in the direction you want until the game detects it. You might have to invert the axis depending on your hardware. For the mini stick click function, bind that to lock radar on target so you can click in on the mini stick to lock. I'm not really a sim player, and I rarely talk about sim on the channel for a reason, but this is a case where I think if you have the hardware for it, you should absolutely try out using your radar this way. Cursor control does have some downsides though, the main one being speed. In the example I gave earlier with the J8 narrow scan, if you use cyclic switching, the radar just instantly selects the target, and as soon as he gets picked up, you can lock him with one key. But with cursor control, you have to play this mini game of moving the cursor on top of the target, which takes time and some of your attention and it doesn't snap onto targets outside of TWS, so it can be picky about where you have the cursor when you try to lock. If it's not in just the right location, the lock will fail, and you'll have to wait for the contact to appear again so you can try again. Personally, most of the time, I don't think the pros of manual cursor control outweigh the cons. I use it on the very rare occasion that I'm flying on HOTAS, or I use it at the start of the game in the F-14 when I'm just throwing some phoenixes across the map before going back to cyclic switching for the rest of the game. But again, it is subjective. If you like it and it works for you, by all means, use it. You do you. The other option is the constant elevation of radar antenna option, which is simpler to explain. With this option turned on, your radar is basically fixed forward and follows your nose around. You can't tilt your radar up or down, even if you use the keybinds to do that. 
so you turn the option off and now your radar is stabilized to the horizon. Your radar elevation indicator really becomes your friend here. You use this to get a reference of what your radar is doing. You need keybinds for radar tilt control axis and now you can pitch your scan area up and down. Again, most HOTAS systems have some kind of control placed with antenna elevation in mind, so if you're playing on HOTAS, bind it there if you have that. Manual elevation lets you scan a certain patch of sky even if you're climbing or diving. So you're climbing at the start of the game and you want to scan roughly where you think their team will be, now you can do that. But I'm going to be honest, I find antenna elevation to be a complete pain in the ass and not worth using. First of all, you've got no actual horizon reference on the elevation indicator. There's the aircraft centerline reference and there's the current radar position and the limits, but nothing about where the horizon is. More importantly, there's no elevation indicators on the cursor. Take the F-15E and DCS for example, the two numbers next to the cursor are the top and bottom of the scan at the current position of the cursor, so I can move the cursor around and read the numbers and adjust my scan up or down accordingly to easily cover the area I need to cover. That's functionality you won't find in War Thunder, which means you've got to look outside of your plane and try to find the current scan position, or you have to use trial and error moving the scan up and down to get the target you want sometimes, it's just awful. So I don't use it, even on HOTAS and SIM, I find it much more convenient to just point the nose around. But again, if you vibe with manual antenna elevation, nothing's stopping you from using it. So I like that they added these two options to give finer radar control, but I don't like that both options come with their own drawbacks regardless of whether they're turned on or off. There are a few ways I can think that they could possibly alleviate this problem. For cyclic switching, I would really like to see some way to be able to use the manual control keybinds while still having cyclic functionality. For example, being able to nudge the selected target in the direction of the up, down, left, right keybind you press, maybe the ability to use the cycle target keybind to still snap the cursor onto different targets, but then still being able to move the cursor around. And for antenna elevation, I really want the ability to use the elevation keybinds with the constant elevation option turned on. I want to be able to bias my scan up or down while still having my radar fixed forward to my nose and not stabilized to the horizon. And of course, I'd love to see elevation markers next to the cursor. That would make using it far easier as well. Those are just some ideas, but there's probably a lot of ways Gaijin could improve radar control functionality. If you learned something from this video, found it helpful, found it entertaining, consider leaving a like and subscribing, it really helps me out. And if you're one of those LARPer elitists who thinks that manual cursor control is better all the time for every player, don't forget to leave your snarky comment in the comments section. For everyone else, come hang out on Discord, and thanks for watching.